Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible reading plan is for the 6th of August, and we'll cover in the Old Testament Habakkuk chapters 1 through 3, and in the New Testament, John chapter 8, and the New King James Version of the Bible reads Habakkuk chapter 1. The prophet questions God's judgments. The burden which the proper prophet Habakkuk saw, the prophet's question, O Lord, how long shall I cry, and you will not hear? Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment proceeds. The Lord's reply, look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe though it were told you. For indeed, I am raising up the Chaldeans, a bitter and hasty nation, which marches through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses also are swifter than leopards and more fierce than evening wolves. Their charges are chargers charge ahead. Their cavalry comes from afar. They fly as the eagle that hastens to eat. They all come for violence. Their faces are set like the east wind. They gather captives like sand. They scoff at kings and princes are scorned by them. They deride every stronghold for they heap up earth in mounds and seize it. Then his mind changes and he transgresses. He commits offense ascribing this power to his God. The prophet's second question, are you not from everlasting? O Lord, my God, my Holy One, we shall not die. O Lord, you have appointed them for judgment. O rock, you have marked them for correction. You are purer, you are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devours? a person more righteous than he. And why do you make men like fish of the sea, like creeping things that have no ruler over them? They take up all of them with a hook. They catch them in their net and gather them in their dragnet. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they sacrifice to their net and burn incense to their dragnet because by them their share is sumptuous and their food plentiful. They shall therefore empty their net and continue to slay nations without pity. As I'm pulling up Habakkuk chapter 2, we've got uh, the Life Journal plan reads uh, the Old Testament once in a year's time and the New Testament twice in a year's time. Habakkuk chapter 2, they just shall live by faith. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer when I am corrected, the just live by faith. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Woe to the wicked, indeed, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man. And he does not stay at home, because he enlarges his desire as hell. And he is like death and cannot be satisfied. He gathers to himself all nations and heaps up for himself all peoples. Will not all these take up a proverb against him and a taunting riddle against him and say, Woe to him who increases what is not his, how long? And to him who loads himself with many pledges, will not your creditors rise up suddenly? Will they not awaken who oppress you? And you will become their booty because you have plundered many nations. All the remnant of the people shall plunder you because of men's blood and the violence of the land and the city and of all who dwell in it. Woe to him who covets evil gain for his house 
that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of disaster. You give shameful counsel to your house, cutting off many peoples, and sin against your soul. For the stone will cry out from the wall, and the beam from the timbers will answer it. Woe to him who builds a town with bloodshed, who establishes a city by iniquity. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts, that the peoples labor to feed the fire, and nations weary themselves in vain? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbor, pressing him to your bottle, even to make him drunk, that you may look on his nakedness. You are filled with shame instead of glory. You also drink and be exposed as uncircumcised. The cup of the Lord's right hand will be turned against you, and utter shame will be on your glory. For the violence done to Lebanon will cover you, and the plunder of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and the violence of the land and the city, and of all who dwell in it. What profit is the image that its maker should carve it? The molded image, a teacher of lies, that the maker of its mold should trust in it. To make mute idols, woe to him who says to wood, awake, to silent stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, yet in it there is no breath at all. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. So as I pull up Habakkuk 3, we've got hundreds of spiritual messages on my website, danielparsonsministry.com, and also hundreds of healthy uh, vegan recipes that are delicious. My wife, Patricia, is a gourmet. So Habakkuk 3, the prophet's prayer. The prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet on Shigi Noah. O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timon, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the, earth, the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his hand, and there his power was hidden. Before, before him went pestilence, and fever followed at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and startled the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. Their perpetual hills bowed. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian trembled. O oh Lord, were you displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers? Was your wrath against the sea? that you rode on your horses, your chariots of salvation. Your bow was made quite ready. Oaths were sworn over your arrows, Selah. You divided the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of your arrows they went, at the shining of your glittering spear. You marched through the land in indignation. You trampled the nations in anger. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for salvation with your anointed. You struck the head from the house of the wicked by laying bare from foundation to neck. Selah, you thrust through with his own arrows, the head of his villages. They came out like a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was like feasting on the poor in secret. You walked through the sea with your horses through the heap of great waters. When I heard my body trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered my bones and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he comes up to the people, he will invade them with his troops, a hymn of faith. Though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, Though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in this God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. To the chief musician with my stringed instruments. So now I'll pull up the New Testament scripture, John chapter 8. As I do, 
please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just go and search for Daniel Parsons Ministry on YouTube and you'll find hundreds of my videos. And John chapter eight, Jesus, the light of the world, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, so he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the lip, to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus defends his self-witness. The Pharisees therefore said to him, you bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. For I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you do not know where I come from and where I'm going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. And yet if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Then they said to him, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If he had known me, you would have known my father also. These words of Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Jesus predicts his departure. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and I will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said to him, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then they said to him, who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you. But he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. What they did not understand, that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I always do, do the, those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. The truth shall make you free. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Abraham's seed and Satan's. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you should seek to kill me because my word is no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. 
Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Before Abraham was, I am. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead and the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say, I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. That's the end of today's Bible reading. I will see you on tomorrow's. Bye for now.